Hello wings everyone and welcome to my let's play of Transport Fever. So on this map I have started a map on small with a 1 to 3 ratio. And I'm going to show you how awesome this game looks. I've actually upped all the graphics and some of the latest patches have fixed a lot of the uh, problems with this game or at least for my computer. Things have gone a lot more smoothly. smoothly. You can turn on anti-aliasing, and I never turn that on. But as you can see, there's a lot of people in this. Like, every single one of these things are AI controlled and walking to some kind of destination. So, this game's really CPU bound more than anything. But if you're new to this game, or if you've never heard of this game, this game is an empire building game in, a, in the way of transporting goods and people from one destination to another. And the way that you do that is through multiple lines. Uh, well, what constitutes as a line would be, say, I'd connect this town over here, Thousand Oaks, over to Fullerton with a train, which is probably will be the first thing I do. The first thing I'm going to do is look at all the other resources nearby. So we have stone over here, and we get some uh, uh, construction resources. Uh, What's it called? It's called uh, construction material. There we go. Um, that's over here. So we can connect this to here with a train or some kind of transportation vessel. Um, so we got trains, and then we have buses. Now, if you if you're new to the game, you'll see that like it's 1850s. This is a long time ago. So. As you can see, these cities are fruits. <laughs> it's western. Granted, obviously I'm western because, like, look at this, it's all desert. But, unfortunately, the developers believe that uh, uh, Americans are... Actually, I wouldn't speak for them, but... The developers uh, seem to have put all U.S.-bound terrain as a desert. And uh, I don't agree upon this, but the way that somebody said on Reddit was that they may feel that uh, when they think of America, um, they think of America as the Wild West. So I'll give them the benefit of doubt on that, but I really, really hope that developers add some other land material for the U.S. side of things, because I live in Washington, and it's primarily green. So, and I mean Washington State, not Washington, D.C. Okay, so... What I'm going to do first is I'm going to connect the train between Thousand Oaks and Fullerton. And then after that, I'm going to attempt to create something that connects these two together. Because stone goes here and is creating construction material. And then construction material can be shipped off to Fullerton, which would be a truck line, which would be awesome. I love using different types of uh, transportation vessels inside this. Um, I don't like using only trains or only buses or only... Yeah, no. To do this, I will have to create, or at least the way that I play the game is that I create a, um, a small little transportation hub inside here, so let me go ahead and do that. And uh, I've learned that not only from other people that stream, but I've learned that having these type of street connections like right here, oh, holding down control, and I can't do that while holding down control, so I can't talk while doing it. <gasps> Yeah, I have it on push talk because uh, my family will wake up eventually. It's late at night, but when that happens, uh, I like to keep those things private, but still have the ability to make a recording. So, bear with me until I find another system of that. Uh, that's the way that my recordings will always go. Therefore, I made a way for a bus to go around in a circle. Now, at first, the way that people were explaining this is like it also ex it makes them like try to grow into this section so that they their uh, their population grows or their um, they have actually many different uh, uh, residential or land types. Or no, I cannot think of the name. <laughs> um, and use only, but still, it's not calling it the, uh, oh, zoning, there we go, 
I'm thinking like SimCity, because if you play SimCity or anything like that, you'll you you already know what this is. And you're like, oh, okay, that's industrial, that's that's commercial, and then there's residential. Cool. So what's that all mean in the game? Well, if you supply certain resources like those construction uh, material to say the industrial, the industrial we will use them to grow. And they need uh, construction material, machines, which um, in the 1850s makes not much sense to me at least. Um, but I, I'm not very versed on history. I don't think we had many machines in 1850. Basically, trains were tra or machines. Um, and then fuel, which also doesn't make too much sense. But as you see the eras change within this, like... Once it hits 1920s, all hell breaks loose, let me tell you. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing going on in these towns right now, but these will be littered with cars. And they will be having cars go between towns that you don't even have connections to. Which begs the question of why you never did make a connection. But anyway, that's from my previous gameplays. I had to learn a strategy for this game. It actually took me a while before I decided to start making a Let's Play. But... I'm still delaying this, so let me uh, get to doing this. And then right down here, I'm going to put a bigger bus terminal and connect those two streets. And then I'm going to have a bus that goes around these these bus stops and you can see that there is this hylation uh, hylation I hope that's a word <laughs> um, there's a, this uh, it, it highlights like it's ca it, yeah the cashment of this depot is what it's highlighting so it means that these the Residents over here will actually walk to this point like they'll walk to this just the ones that are highlighted right over here and uh, The other ones will have to find another route So these guys will probably go to like this bus stop and then they'll travel this way And since this is like a commercial area there will be people that will want to go to this bus stop because uh they buy their goods, they buy their, their groceries. I think it's groceries that they have there. Um, otherwise, that's definitely, that definitely goes to the, uh, to the residential zone. Yes, so this is where they buy their food, and then they buy, find, buy goods. I actually have never shipped goods to any city yet, so I've shipped both of these, but I've never done goods because it's a lot more complicated in its... It's not that complicated, but here's a goods area. To be honest, in this map, this is actually really nice, having it right here. And I can make plastic right there. This will be a very interesting playthrough, I will state that. Because uh, this is the first time I did a 1 to 3 on a small map. And small is like too small if you do a 1 to 1. But a 1 to 3, this is, this is really nice. And it will uh, give a good goal end to the end of the Let's Play where I can have all of these cities connected. Um, but I will have to, sh I will show you guys a different strategy I'm going to try to use that maybe other people haven't used. Um, on how I'm going to play out these, these, uh, these cities. Because I kind of influence how they grow from what I've, un what I've played, what I give them will determine what they grow in um though i think they'll always grow in some small amount but they'll grow more if you give them more industrial stuff instead of industrial uh, residential and like residential residential really doesn't need anything i guess residential will grow on its own i'm assuming food would be connected to residential but again Let's get to the actual train because man does this game make everything look like small little toy cars and toy trains and just brings out a boyish end of me out and I just oh I love it. it my, this game is a, um, a game that has reminded me of another game called uh, Transport Tycoon Deluxe which I used to play when I was a child and uh, I also play the open 
uh, version of that, which is a free game. Uh, someday I may make a Let's Play on that, but definitely after I've played out this one. So I've known, my strategy usually is starting is to buy these little horse carriages in 1850. Um, they, of course, are the only way that you can transport uh, passengers at the beginning of the game. But that's only for road vehicles. Um, we have at least one other train. We do have a train that we can use. And to be honest, <laughs> from 1850s until about 1900s, there are not many um, upgrades that happen. Uh, there are very, very little until I think I think nine, about nineteen, like eighteen nineties. I think we start getting some uh, some decent trains coming out, but road vehicles don't change until about nineteen twenties, which makes more sense from what I know about history. Now for, uh, see, this doesn't make, okay, I know what's wrong. So sometimes you'll have it where it's like, wait a second, you're going to go this way and then you're going to turn around? That doesn't make any sense. I don't want you doing that. I want you to stop right over here with a stop. Well, I screwed up on making this one, so I actually have to make that stop. Once I pop this down, to correct itself. Now, one could say the same thing over here. Actually, yes. See, this makes sense for the shortest distance, but if I were to pop one right here, it shouldn't turn around. It shouldn't go that way. And it is still going that way. Interesting. So we'll have to make a stop over here, but that's okay. The city will eventually grow, and people may use it. And doubling them up is always a good strategy. You should always double them up. That way when everyone uh, come back into the city, especially as it gets bigger, um, it's so much easier to just update lines that way. And you will update your lines, more than likely. You're not, they're not going to be the same, stay the same. This game does take a lot more, um, it's not set and forget. Uh, Open TTD was like more set, set and forget, and you also have to saturate your lines. In this one, you don't have to saturate your lines as much. Like. I probably won't use any more buses than the ones that I just bought right now until this gets really, really large. And the only way you can tell that you need more is how many people are using them. Now, because nobody is transferring to a train and going to another city, there is very little use that's going to come out of this. I have never made any profit with inter, um, um, inter-transit lines. They work when you feed a system. So if you're a player from OpenTTD, you'll realize that that's a feeder system. It's exactly what it is. So you're, you're making a feeder system of passengers into this because they use passengers at destinations. They don't have destinations that you have to, that you have to fulfill, but they have destinations that um, are made because you already are fulfilling them. So once you basically, the time on if you build it they will come uh, or at least that's the way it's supposed to be but let's not get into that oh and I still have to update that one so all I gotta do is hit add station and I want add station after Mill Street and there <laughs> so it's Mill Street that's really screwing me up uh, what? I didn't even notice that. I bet you guys that were sitting there screaming at the camera, you screwed up on the Mill Street. It's that's that's never gonna work. Yeah, I got it now.
Whenever you use the bulldozer, um, for some reason, it turns off the markers for your your stops. And I actually prefer that it didn't do that, so that I can actually destroy my stops without zooming all the way in. You will notice, probably also because I'm recording, that my video feed will start to chop up because my computer is not as perfect as it <laughs> could have been. It's using a video card that's over six years old, so... But this game is not that taxing, so I play worse. So we don't want Mill Street anymore, we want to move that one. And we want to add this one after Lois Street, Sound Street, Low yes. Okay, so 13th Street. Now that line should be... It's not going to make me any type of profit yet, but it will eventually. Now, if I really wanted to be a cheapskate, I could just connect these two stands with a with a uh, you know horse line, a bus line. But it it if you look, this road that's automatically generated, it's really wavy, which probably makes sense if you really looked at the land. Like you could see, this is not flat. So maybe it makes sense if you're trying to make it perfectly flat or as as well as possible because it is kind of hugging these turns, but it's still coming up a hill right here. This is still coming up. Now with with the horses, they don't they don't actually get bothered by this too much. I have only seen really really steep hills being a problem for the horses and even the buses later on in the future. But this windiness does take more time than making a straight road. And preferably, I'm going to get more cash from a train uh, since more people want to take, a f in, in my experiences, more people want to take a fast route. But there is a demand for slower routes. So making a bus line is not unprofitable, even if you have a train line. So keep that in mind when playing this game. It can still be profitable. You do need to put like 10 buses on it. And it makes sense to put a lot. Um, maybe not in the real world would you see that many. I don't really, sh I'm, I don't even know. Because I mean, how many people have an aerial view of following buses? You know, um, you would have to have a GPS tracker of that. But So for this one, I like to think into the future for uh, train routes. But I can already tell you that I'm going to use something that I don't use very often for passengers. I'm more than likely going to do a straight route between these two. I'll double it up more than likely in the future. And then in the future, I'm going to want to connect these to other towns. Now, I could just connect the town between these two. And then I could have a three-way. And then I could have a four-way. And I could just double up these lines and connect them that way. I can also do something where these two connect and then there's a train that goes between this and then it'll flip over and go to that and it'll flip over to go to that and then it'll go this way and it'll connect to here again and it'll rinse and repeat and that I think is what I'm going to end up doing in this series because I have not tried such a line like that normally I connect them like this in a line and then I double them and then I connect new towns together. Now, I've only really done four cities at once. Um, I like, I love building the cities. I think when the cities get built, and by 1920, uh, you have all the ca cars out, out there, as much as they're frustrating, because they really are for all your internal stuff, they're really fun to watch. Like, this turns into a bustling city, trust me. That is what's amazing about this game. I have not seen, some, like, it did that, and we, we all know it, those that play open TT, it kind of does that in that game too. And with some mods, you can you can do all kinds of stuff with with that game. Um, when it comes to to the the type of vessels that you have, so as you can see, um, well, until I lay this down, let me do that real quick. But you, I'll zoom in on one of these horses because they all look good. All the models look good. Everything in this game looks amazing. So with this, I'm gonna want to connect it to the road um that's not something i like the idea of but 
because I, in other games you could just do it right here and then these people would have an imaginary line where they can connect to things but instead they actually walk to the station through the road that is why everything has to be connected now this is a PAX line or a passenger line so there are going to be people walking to it more than likely I don't think they actually teleport to it but uh, goods and stuff like that do sort of just appear um, but that's that's to be expected so I'm gonna make this one a uh, another terminal line and I'm actually gonna uh, I'm thinking about I might slap it right there but I could also connect these lines so that I can have a bus or I could do a figure eight so I connect this line and I connect and I think that would be yeah that'll give me perfect coverage figure eight infinity woohoo phi you'll learn to I love the terminology phi So now I need to really think about the type of land that I'm going to go through. And to be honest, following the road probably won't be that expensive. Because terraforming in this game will break your bank. Trust me. Now, I'm more than likely going to have to borrow more money from the bank. But that's okay, because the interest that I pay is at the end of the year and only at the end of the year. If you're a player from OpenTTD, you'll know that if you put yourself in debt, it hurts you every month. Uh, though there is a monthly type of transaction, well, every month there you get running costs, but not profit. Well, you get profit when it happens, literally, like, as it happens. But you get running costs every month, and then every year is when your interest is here. Which is also a point. Um, granted, it's... It is seven, it's September by now. Wow, I've wasted almost a year. I mean, to me, that's the year almost over. But it's not, I might know. It's an old feeling from school, I think. So, um, one of the things I've seen some people just not remember is that one of the tips on this loading screen that comes up is if you use n and m you can lower and raise the height of your track now it sort of raises this end first so it's so much better as everybody will tell you to run in segments because then you can more control now no matter what i'm going to cut into the ground i'm gonna going to because this is lower so this has to go up Also, do not confuse N and M from this. This is not the same thing. This is telling you that you want to primarily stay flat, or you want to go down, really down, or go really up. Now, of course, I want it to go really up. It, train's going to have a little problem coming up, but it's not going to be that bad. And it has to happen, obviously. Oh, and yeah, and if you keep it on this mode, that's what ends up happening. So it more is like a, I want to stay going up gradually, because you're never going to have a really steep steep one. I will stay, I've only gone into the 1940s into this game, I haven't gotten that far, but I hope to bring this all the way up to 2000s if I can. I also probably won't have such a winded version of this, um, where I'm speaking a lot in the future, but being it's the first uh, episode, I figured I'm just going to That sounds about flat. Well, it's raised, but if I keep it like this, uh, I feel like sometimes it should be set into the ground or raised. Because either way, you always keep the same height. If you go over flat land or if you go over a little bit hilly land, it kind of just gobbles it up. And you don't have to worry about it too much. 
the whole point of messing with the height is to lower the cost because I'm telling you, laying track, oh boy, does that get expensive. And laying your track, you should always try to keep speed in mind because the trains, as they get faster, if they have to go over a very, very, like, I'll show you. Ah. This, these markers right here, which is not explained very often, that's your speed indicator. That's the speed limit that a train can go around this. That means he's going to slow down right here just to go around this. Because if he goes any faster, he'll probably derail. And that means when you get really fast trains, they're never going to be able to go over this. Now, this track only uh, actually has a speed limit. And I think it's 120 kilometers, but I have it on miles per hour. So um, I think it's 120 miles per hour. But I also learned, I kind of learned that in another Let's Play that I was watching. So I'm, I, but when I, when I found out that this was freaking speed limits, it's like, oh, that's why all my trains have performance issues. Great. Wish I knew that. I knew they slew down, but I didn't know that this was an indicator. Now that I know it's an indicator, this is so much m easier to make turns. Because, as you can see, the speed is coming up. There's the speed going right back up to 75. I'm assuming that this is 75. That's how fast I can go. That's, that's what it was. It probably wasn't uh, 120. He probably had it on 120 kilometers an hour, and I have mine on miles per hour, because that's, that's what I know. I'm in America. Though I use the metric system in computers, I do not use the metric system when it comes to, like, I don't know, I can't do the whole temperature thing outside, and you can't tell me Celsius. I kind of know. I know 50 Celsius is really freaking hot. So, I'm going to gobble that. Because that's not bad, and as you can see, that was basically it building land. Wow, look at the texture job on that. That's really screwed up. Hey developers, if you're watching, you got a texture problem. Maybe it'll clear up later on, but oh well. Uh, but as you can see, this is like a small hill. And it's building a land behind it. It's raising it up into the ground so it's all flat. Now that means that it's gonna once it gets up to its max speed, it'll stay its max speed the entire time. And that's the benefit of doing that. Um, now, with here, I'm either gonna cut through the land or I'm gonna go up it. Depending on the cost, I'll either I'll try to cut through it. Of course, cutting through it, it decides that it wants to do a tunnel. It's actually not a bad price for a small tunnel. I'm almost tempted to go for it. Because, like, again, speed is king in this game. The faster you can get goods or passengers from one point to another point, the more money you make. And distance matters. And being that this is a small distance, I want all the speed I can get. So you know what? I am going to borrow money if I need to, but I'm going to eat the cost of that one. That's actually not a bad tunnel. Usually tunnels are like two, three million every time I see one created that's even worthwhile. This one's going right back to the, it's going right up to the, the height. That, that's a small ass tunnel. Yeah, I'm eating this. That is nothing. And plus, who doesn't want a tunnel on their freaking train track? Because if you haven't seen this game, you're in for a surprise once I get this train running. <laughs> It makes this game, like, so pretty. If you don't like watching your trains, you're, like, that's what this game is so, so made for. It looks like I'm going to have to go across the road. I should have done that beforehand, but I think I might be able to get away with it by going across here. Otherwise, I'm going to take over a, a good portion of the road. I can go across any time. It just depends on the speed at which I'm going to do it. Like, see, I has to slow down to 49 uh, miles per hour. It's just to go over that patch. And also, when you cut, I don't know about you guys, but your computer might lag in this game. One of the things that I've noticed is that when you drag this over a path, it seems to lag. And no matter how many patches they come out with, it hasn't fixed it for my computer. So, um, I'm still waiting for them to hopefully optimize me. But I'm not... Uh, Definitely not upgraded to the latest of the latest, and it is what it is. I got a GTX 460 SE inside my computer. Yeah, it's time to upgrade.
And then that's the next part that ends up happening. So when you see this, don't curse at the screen. Try to fix it. Oh, I am not building another tunnel. Uh-uh. But 90k for that, if I could just get it to like itself, would be nice. Yeah. I live with this type of lag, I know. I live with it in other games. Looks like I'm gonna have to cut off, uh, what, 10 miles per hour? I don't know. That's not bad, I guess. And 30k. Mm. That's a decent price, but as you can see, I'm already going down to money. And it hasn't changed since the next year yet, so I've been spending too much money. But I'm still going to have to borrow the buy the train, more than likely. And then i got to build the yellow bus route down below. And then after that, after that, you might want to collect some money. That's just my suggestion. You might want to sit back and collect money, and of course I'll do that off camera. k yeah we'll have to bend a little bit to the side but yeah, it's not bad now the first thing I'm gonna do before I connect these two is as you can see I already preemptively doubled them now that means that I want to come over here and make sure that I'm using the same side because when I double it it's gonna be so much easier and cheaper to follow this line it'll actually snap together perfectly but I won't be doubling this after until after it makes me a de decent amount of cash. It just isn't worth it until later in the game. It's also not worth it to go into anything else besides passengers until the next century. After 50 years, it's the better time, or at least until you have an amassment of money, which might take some time. The only thing that I can suggest to anyone that's playing the game that could be worth it early game would be stone to construction just like I was saying earlier. This is uh, the one of the first um, uh, cargo routes that I ever start because this makes this makes them grow in indu industry and when you grow in industry you create more jobs. More jobs means more residential is going to be needed. More residential means that there's going to be more commercial needed which means all of it will grow. As long as the industrial end is growing all of it will eventually grow. At least that's what I've noticed. Maybe I'm wrong. You tell me. Okay, so this is going to probably cost a pretty penny. Eh, 174. I'm already going to borrow. That's really not that bad. At least I'm not blowing away a 500 at a time. That's something that I don't like doing. And I could fine-tune this so that it doesn't do this. But I, again, I want as much speed as possible. Eventually, I'm going to renovate this because this is just horrible. I could get rid of the road. But right now, I'm just going to let it be as it is because I need to get some cash rolling real soon. Now, thankfully, there is cash coming in just a teensy bit. But I guarantee you, this line is not making me any money. And it won't be for a while. I mean, 2 of 20? Yeah. To be honest, I might even get rid of a bus even after the train's in. Alright, so that's the train track. Obviously, that's taking me far too fucking long. <laughs> Now I need to make the depot. Now, my strategy on this is to find some flat area. Though, I haven't confirmed this yet, but I do believe taking out trees costs extra cash. One of the things that can help you with the hills is the contour lines, which I haven't shown yet. Um, I haven't determined yet through my gameplay whether it's more effective to build land or to take away land. But either direction of this, I feel like I'm going to be doing either one. But this looks like it's the best place to put a depot, which I'm absolutely going to need for this train. Yeah, 
It's definitely gonna have to be here. Well, that's not that much money. Let's see if it's connecting right. No. Not that bad, but um, going this way may be harder. No. Oh, see, I'm not connected right. All right. Now let's put the train depot in. Now if uh, you're still new to the game and you haven't gone through maybe the tutorial, just jumped right into the game. Um, to rotate your constructions, always use the M and N keys, just like for height of tracks. M and N keys uh, turn it left and right. Personally, I wish it was like a shift in the, the scroll wheel, but can't have everything. And hey, some people don't have a scroll wheel. I feel really bad for you people. <laughs> you should have a scroll wheel. It makes things so much easier. So the only train available at this time would be this Baldwin six wheels. And a flexible beam truck or six wheels connected engine was invented by Matthias Baldwin in 1842. His aim was to use all the locomotives weight for traction. Now again, uh, ah, what the hell does that mean? Using for traction, I kind of know what traction is, but I also know two different versions of traction. So if anybody has any idea what that means, I'd like to know. Like, is he trying to push something? His traction would be how much grip you have, but I mean, if you're on an iron rail, I don't even know how this stuff has grip in the first place. That's kind of slippery to me. I've walked on train tracks, they're kind of slippery. I don't know how the wheels are made. I don't know much about that. Now that ate some money. That ate 172k. So now I gotta get passenger cars. And guess what? They cost more than the train. Does that make any sense to anybody? Because that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, okay, they got more seats and more leather. I guess that doesn't have much leather. Depends on what you consider is more expensive. Metal or leather? Oh, yeah, of course. Don't have enough money. I'm going to borrow a couple million here. So my loan's at four million. I started at two million. So I just got two more million. And I think that that would be perfect. You know, for my starting train, I always put it to three or four. I'm going to go three. Or I'm going to go four. And then you got to create a line, just like the other one. And all you got to do is click the station. And once you click the station... Oh, I'm holding on control. I can't see. Okay. Push to chalk is not working very well. Once you set up the line, the train will start going. The second you put in one part of it, that goes for all vehicles. So you can actually get them to start going to a line. And not have to worry about performance loss or profit loss, depending on how you're playing. If you're trying to squeeze out every little iota of money, <laughs> you're going to want to watch this time frame too. Also, one thing I've never mentioned was that my game is only modded by a small amount. And that is that the game speed usually is about every day is, a, is two seconds. I went into the configuration file and I changed the game from uh, two seconds to eight seconds. So it takes eight seconds for one day to pass. And every day, I believe, or every month is, local, is uh, averaged out to 31 days. And then there's 12 months in a year. So you do the math. But 
it takes about 48 minutes for an entire year to pass on. And so that means one year has passed on. That means I've been recording for 48 minutes, which is my time to cut this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe. And if you have any constructive criticism or any thoughts or ideas or questions about this game or uh, where this uh, Let's Play may go or any other games that you would like to see me Let's Play, please post them in the comments and I make sure to respond to as many as I can. Toss off for now. Hey guys, after reviewing my video in full, I noticed that there was one problem with my video. The audio sounds are not syncing correctly. Well, I'm trying to address this. I'm not sure where this is happening, but I'm having this feeling that it has to do with uh, Open Broadcast Studio and uh, the game lagging. So therefore, I'm going to probably turn off anti-aliasing. As I said, that I never turn it on, so... Hopefully that'll fix the problem, but here's the train that I wasn't able to show you because of the time allotment. But enjoy and see you guys in the next video.